And we're back talking about uh, the new um, enhanced mica redress scheme, but unfortunately it's going to be uh, talking about leaks again. I don't know what your attitude to uh, this, uh, all this leaking is, uh, Michael Doherty. Um, of the Mica Action Group, but I mean, it's 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 not really how we should be doing this. It's not about me, sorry, by the way. You guys should have access to all of this and be meeting and communicating with families and then coming to the likes of us and giving your reaction to it. Instead, it's me and you, really, uh, chewing over what was printed in a paper at the weekend. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, Greg, but, uh, you know, we're extremely um, disappointed and disillusioned, I can say at this stage. Um as you've just talked about, you know, families have been put through hell here. It's leak after leak, kite flying, um, and looking to see where's your breaking point. And I think they've probably just about arrived there. Mm. You know, we have engaged, and I have been personally involved in back channels um, where there was a lot of progress made, a lot of progress made around clarification of the asks, around, um, you know, scenarios that may work, all of them sorts of things and you know all you know all the officials are not all the bad guys there are certainly guys on there that are very very sympathetic to the cause really doing their best but they're not in the majority they're in the absolute minority and what we have today is a situation where um at the 11th hour everyone waiting with a bit of breath for an announcement tomorrow to find out that the devil has been in the detail once again and it's obvious that the civil servants have managed to claw back. Oh, something happened over the weekend, Greg. We were in a lot better place come Thursday or Friday. Um, we, at the beginning of the week, were told that the rental families were probably going to be left behind. We had a very strong campaign around that and a brilliant response from, you know, the tenant families telling their stories, from these, a lot of them accidental landlords telling their stories, and it was back on the table again. It was firmly back on the table. And um, the, the last push we thought we'd left was the holiday homeowners, and that's where we focused the campaign on on the last part of the week. And we believed that's where the shortfall was and we weren't going to leave them behind. But... You know, Rodney Edwards manages to uh, get a, a look at the memo, something that I have not been afforded, nor the officials that I've been working with afforded either, because I think some others sees them as going, going rogue because they have now a level of empathy for the homeowner here and trying to work with us. And now you're in a situation where Rodney Edwards gets access to this. And the first time we learn our fate, is um and, and the papers on a sunday morning do you believe then whomever is leaking this is sympathetic to your plight in other words giving you a heads up no i think what's happening here is back to the kite flying greg i right. think this is back to what will they take and um the responses are extremely robust here this morning will not be us on that table and it's back into the escalation mode that we always wanted to avoid mm. but it looks like it's going to be needed well, we'll talk about uh, what could come, but let's talk about what is contained uh, in these links. A cap of €420,000. Uh, How many does that leave behind? You're around the 18 to 20% yeah. type numbers there, Greg. Now, talk uh, to that, me about yeah. the, uh, <coughs> the, the detail within uh, a cap of €138 uh, Euro per square foot. Uh, what does that mean and, and what could be the problems there? Well, I see Martin on the call there as well, which is good because it, it's Martin through the, the county council was able to give us the, the reality figures that's out there. So 43 homes have been progressed or processed by the the Donegal County Council so far, uh, stage two approved for demolish and rebuild. And the average across, across 43 houses, which is not an insignificant number, says 150 euro a square foot. Yet... We have got SCSI, who didn't update their figures since April of last year, suggesting 138 uh, euro square foot should do. Now, I'm Ironically, not saying, I'm that's not, for... Yeah, sorry, before you continue, I'm not saying <coughs> this is right, OK, but is it possible they're putting that cap in there that if the contractors want this work, well, they're going to have to do it at more competitive prices? This is to avoid, you know, contractors naming their price and, yeah. and exploiting but the scheme. Yeah, but they've done nothing to cap that. They've nothing to curtail the contractors. What I would say to the contractors and what I would say to government, if that's their plight, is, well, come you in and do it instead. Come in and do what you did in Dublin in the Leinster Pie Rights Scheme. You just took it on end to end. You're asking homeowners up here to basically contract manage their own homes, number one, and number two, manage the market prices. 
and bring them down to 138 euro a square foot when there's plenty of good work for these contractors out there that they've no interest in going near it anyway in the first place. So come you and yourselves, government, take it on through an agency, which is what we ask for anyway, but they'll not do that because they know they couldn't afford to do it even for the figures they're quoting themselves. So what they're going to do is they're going to call it a grant, throw it to us, and the best of luck to you is that's not good enough, Greg. Right. Oh. And yeah, it's just, you know, it's back in now that they're going to try and present this as a 100% redress scheme. And the reality is every homeowner will be out money. So, you know, this fixation with the cap, the 420K, every homeowner will be out money here. That can't be seen in anybody's terms as a 100% redress scheme. Right. I'll come back to you. You mentioned Councillor Mac Martin McDermott being an another one of our guests. I mean, obviously, Martin, we're talking about a leak again, uh, but, you know, uh, I'd imagine it's pretty reliable, uh, albeit it might not be the final figure. It certainly was reliable, I would imagine, at the time it being leaked. What's your reaction? to it yeah good morning greg good morning michael um i suppose it's another week with the last day we were on here we were on it sitting talking about a leak of three hundred and fifty thousand, um and now we're sitting here today again talking of another leak in the in the paper by rodney edwards yesterday um it's disappointing that you know especially for michael and his team there the work that they've put in over the last uh seven eight months in particular um, that they have to read it on a Sunday morning uh, in a paper, uh, details that, that they've been trying to get over the last few weeks. Uh, that's very disappointing. Um, I suppose if you look back at the leaks to date have been quite uh, to the point and have been quite accurate um, during the last number of months. So we can only take that this again is accurate. And as Michael has, has clearly said there, there's elements now of it that uh, in the, the, the detail that is not sufficient, is not sufficient for a scheme that we've been trying to, to get over the line. Talk to me a little um, bit about this, because uh, 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 I think um, Mike, Mike, Michael did reference you as it relates to the cap, uh, a cap of 138 per square foot. Um, and the estimates out there, well, it's not estimates really, because as, as Michael mentioned, you know, we know that that falls uh, somewhat some way short. Why do you think they would put in a cap at 138 when evidence suggests, you know, we're talking about 150 euro per square foot at the moment? Well, uh, they're probably going with, and, and Michael did uh, make a point there about the SCSI calculator. That at the minute is saying 138, so that's probably what they're taking. Um, and, and you know, it has not been updated to the, to the figures that we have today here in, in the Northwest and if you take the houses that are through the council to date, there's 43 that's through stage two, and there's 27 of those that have been uh, granted works to start and demolish works and, and rebuild works. The average square foot, the average square foot rate in those houses is 150 euros a square foot. Um, if you look at houses that the council would be tendering and building at the minute, the square foot rate is actually higher than 150 square foot for a three bedroom house. So, I mean, the figures that we have are not pulled out of the sky. They're actual factual figures they're figures that are there for for the department so that so uh, that's 138 cap is significantly short of real world real world data it's 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 being it's it's based on a outdated calculation then yes yes absolutely and and that's why i think that the scsa calculator is going to be updated uh, i could be corrected on that in january but i think that's that's what's happening and i think that that is in the new updated one is something that that the department need to look at and need to be sure. Well, would this scheme be linked to that though? Is that how we in ensure that the scheme stays up with what seems to be a an upward curve in costing? So, in other words, whilst at one thirty eight at the moment, could there be a further caveat in there? And I haven't seen all of the detail that that <coughs> that is able to be updated. Well, again, we we don't know that detail. Um, that that has not been stipulated as to what that detail is. It's going to be uh, index linked to that, and there's going to be index linked. We, we can't get that information. We don't have that information at the moment. But I think it's important that that you know over the next day or so, if, the, if this is going to be announced tomorrow, that you know that figure of one to yet is uh, brought back into line with what the current figures are today here in the county. All right. Now. Uh, what, uh, the rental properties being uh, included, but uh, it would require that the um, landlord, and, and in some cases, it's, you don't really, it's not really like landlords because these are people that are just uh, renting out their homes or, or second homes, the RT, uh, have to be registered with the RTB as November 1st. What's the significance of that? 
Well, again, I suppose the RTV is something that that um, landlords do register with, but not every landlord does register with the RTB or do they have to register RTB? They don't have to do that. So I think, you know, pulling that date back to the 1st of November as well, giving people not an opportunity now to do that if that's what they want to, to work off is, is very unfair. Um, there's lots of landlords out there that would have, you know, rental properties on a short term basis that might be renting them for a month at a time or two or three weeks at a time, particularly over the summer and, 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 Donegal Airbnb we're talking about Airbnbs yeah. and that type of thing and, and Donegal needs that type of of um, houses or we wouldn't be able to accommodate the tourism that, that we can accommodate at the minute those p- people don't register with RTB so does that leave them out of the equation here are they not allowed to get their houses fixed mm. and if that's the case that's totally unfair all right um i know you have another appointment i appreciate your time this morning thank you that same point to you uh, michael it is it a dirty trick to sort of put in this date november 1st tell us after the fact it, it feels a wee bit like uh uh it, it, it feels a wee bit dodgy and nasty to me do you know what i mean i don't know yeah well, you know, this has been the trend throughout. Um, the 90-10 scheme that I do believe the last government thought they were delivering turned out to be a 60-40 scheme because they put in caps and exclusions. Uh, even then, they put in a date that you had to be a principal private resident before January 2020. You had to have your home bought before January 2020. All this sort of stuff. So, you know, this is not um, unlike them. Um, the local property tax, again, is a prime example. This year was exemption, and yet the print criteria that meant only 6% of our people could avail of it. So, like, on one hand, great headline. On the other hand, they take everything away. Now we have got the, the landlords included, and uh, they've put in a retrospective date that um, they have looked at and decided, I have no doubt, they have been able to look at their level at the number of RTB registered landlords for Donegal and said, OK, there's a number we could work with. Uh, we'll make sure that doesn't get any bigger by putting in a retrospective date. And there you have it. Yeah, and I mean, the- if you were... Bl- maybe someone could argue uh, if if you were obliged to be registered with the RTB, but uh, according to Councillor McDermott there, you're not obliged to. It, it's not by choice. So... It, it, it seems, as you say, it seems like a way of, of culling a certain amount of properties out of this. Yeah, and the other part of it too, the, the Rental Tenancy Board, it's, the, it's a tenancy, it's not the property that's registered, it's the tenant that's registered. And what that amounts to is, say, for example, you had been registered with RTB all along, but your tenant, for whatever reason, was left on the 1st of November, you're not registered on the 1st of November. The, the property may have been the property, but if that tenant moves on and you that t- property vacant, you don't qualify. So you could That's be how between tenants. That number is. You could be you between could be. tenants for two uh, weeks. Exactly. And not qualified for the scheme as this criteria now but stands. I would, if I were the person coming up with this on, on the government's perspective or the civil servant's perspective, I'd be embarrassed at that, um, you know, that, that obvious flaw in it. Do you know what I'm on about? And I'm not sort yeah. of... You know, obviously, yeah. I'm siding uh, uh, down this side, but you know what I mean. Like, I'd be, uh, I'd be embarrassed that I could have a scheme that someone could fall out of it, and then the awful publicity of it because there are two weeks between tenants. That that I'd be embarrassed to sign off on that. Yeah, and you know, there's been massive competency issues. I believe Greg all along here, massive comp. To be honest with you, anything that has been a workable proposal has came from the homeowners. That's how it has been. Mm. For example, there is no answer to the question of by calling, as you rightly put, the number of homes that can avail of this scheme. You know, the fact that they've got a um, hundred or sorry, they have three and a half thousand people listed already on the waiting list for social housing, 1,700 ha- families, 1,300 housing units of their own, which are condemned because of MICA. Where do they think they're going to put these families that are in the houses that they have now managed to cull from eligibility to the scheme? They have no answers for that, but they'll still go ahead, do the cull, and then kick that problem down the road that um, we'll come back to it another time again. That you know, it's just so poorly thought out. This has been uh, think, this has been a feature all not, along here. You're not doing if if you this permanent government, right? If you're working for the greater good, you look at it and you figure out that plot hole that you've just talked of that you're creating another problem. Okay, that's if you were waiting for the greater good. If you're ass covering and just want to get something across the line, you know that 
you, you can write about in a book in 30 years' time, well, then maybe you go with this. But if you're looking at the greater good, you don't do things like this because, as you say, you create another problem that someone else has to deal with, but more importantly, it's us that have to deal with. Just a couple of minutes on what, what happens next because we are getting down uh, to D-Day now, it's, uh, you, you know, uh, whereby pressure is... If, if this is as is and it's not accepted... I mean, obviously, the government can pass it anyway, as you've pointed out on a number of occasions. But in terms of the campaign, it's on to the next level. People are battered, bruised and broken by this whole process, uh, Michael. And even down that last storm, uh, having a house that can be tossed by 80 or 90 mile an hour winds or walls and what have you. Can people be rallied again to continue this fight, do you think? Absolutely, they can. And the one thing you'll find is when people's backs are to the walls that, um, you know, people will stand up. People have stood up all along. I think people, and probably guided by the likes of myself and others that are leading in the campaign, were taking comfort from the fact that progress was being made. And that's what we were led to believe were happening all along. And the bombshell of the Rodney Edwards uh, revelation on Sunday morning changed all of that. So this is where it now comes back to, you know, uh, we, we've talked about it before. Anne, Eileen, Joe Morgan, they're, they, they're, they're heading to Brussels now tomorrow. OK, so they'll they'll bring that and they'll make a good job of, of bringing this at a European level. But back at home, you know, if you think about it now, I talked about it before, we have got uh, disaffected TDs in the dial. We have it in the Fianna Fáil party. I have five that have already made contact. I believe there's up to nine based on what these five are telling me. So if we look at what's there, we can have we can make things life very, very difficult for this government as much as that's not the road we want to go down. But we can do that if we have to. But the other part as well, Greg, and I think is if we go back to Dublin, it'll not be like we went back to Dublin the last time, you know, when you were down there with us. You know, if we look at the I think we have to come along and we're now saying, okay, we have to team up with society in general that are disgruntled with this government if that's what it takes you know if we have to look to the farmers if we have to look to the fishermen i know the truckers went down but you know truckers with backup are different set of as a different campaign to the one that they were down there recently in dublin if we look at health service we look at education you, you know you you i think you'd find it difficult to find a section of society represented by the departments at the minute that are happy and you know if we're back in dublin you're 150,000 people we will be taking everybody with us this time because this reflects not just Micah and Donegal and in the other and Pyrite and other five affected counties. It re represents society mm. as a whole being completely ignored and being talked down to by senior civil servants. And it doesn't matter which department you're in. We've got the housing department and we've they've made themselves they've shown their true colours. But do we go back over into the expenditure, go back over into finance and go back and across any of the other departments that we've talked to, agriculture, marine, the rest of them, who's happy? No one's happy and we've got civil servants dictating to the ministers how things are going to be. This is not democracy, Greg, in any shape or form and I think it's time that's called out. I see it's going to be interesting too if it goes as is leaked because a lot of those TDs that have made commitments, uh, the chickens will be coming home to roost and it may come down to a vote whereby they actually have to uh, back up their words and <laughs> that will be interesting to see how that goes. Times. All right, listen, thank you very much as always. Michael Doherty there, who is the PRO of the Mike Action Group.